Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Southern Woods and Waters. Really good to be back in the studio with y'all tonight. As y'all know, we weren't able to be down here last week. It was just a little bit too treacherous for everybody to get in and get down here and do a live show, so it's great to be back. We've got a really good informational show for y'all tonight. You're going to want to get those tablets out, get ready to take some notes, and have your phone ready because we're going to have the, the call-in lines are going to be open here in just a little bit, and we're going to leave those open for a couple of segments. So, as you guys know, we've been talking about it for the last little while, and coming up this weekend is this year's Frostbite Tournament over at a Fate Sanders Marina on Percy Priest Lake. And tonight, I'm joined by Dayton Blair, and uh, just beside him there is Tristan McCormick and Mr. P.B. White, the Frostbite man himself. He's here on the end, and we're going to be talking about the Frostbite Tournament and getting you guys information on that. But also, we're going to be going over some wintertime bass fishing tactics and well, some, some of the baits, things some yeah. lures and stuff yeah some For different sure. things that, that that we all use specifically this time of year coming out of the cold weather kind of you know springs just right around the corner guys yeah, warm weather yeah, and warm uh, it, you know it's it's that time of year is coming but first of all pb saturday's the day yep it is uh, been waiting all year and it's been tough weather but We've had ice out and it's <laughs> done now, so you know it's it's time to go fishing, and uh, we look forward to have everybody come out and join us, and should be a great day of fishing. Yep, and that's going to be a little bit different as far as the the way you're going to do it this year. People, the anglers can go check in, and then they can head on out, and then they just no no dropping lines till seven o'clock. Yes, that that's correct? exactly right. What well, he said it. Uh, we want to be COVID safe as possible, so all the anglers have to do is just come in the morning of the tournament. Um, the ones that's already early registered, just they'll come to a certain part of the dining room and check in. And the ones that has to pay the morning of, they'll go a different part of the dining room. So we won't have everybody grouped up. Okay. And we acquire everybody to, if you have a mask, bring it to the to the registration part. If not, we will provide masks. Okay. Perfect. Right. Perfect. We're really looking forward to that, guys. And and uh, that you know that's one we fished it the last couple of years yep. it's always been a great time i always say it's one of my favorite ones of the it year is. i love the layout uh -huh. that you use Big i just time. i love the way yeah. that it, it uh, kicks off the year pretty much it does it gets it everybody does. fired up well a lot of work goes into it mm -hmm. you know it's a and whole year for you yes you know? you know and it gets down to these last couple of weeks and, and everything just it, it slowly comes together and now all my worries are just about over now we just <laughs> got to get the anglers out there and then we'll get the ball that's oh, right. That's great. Uh, well, Dayton, this got some rain coming in. It's going to be starting tomorrow. And, you know, but what do Man, you think it it's going nice. to be? It's going it's it's to warm the water up just a little bit. Man, you know. so I'll tell you right now, the water's already warming up in the back of the creeks. I was flipping rocks earlier today, and the crawdads are already out. I mean, I'm literally already catching crop in a foot and a half, two foot of water. Yeah. But they've sucked the lake back down. They got the floodgates open because they're prepping for all this rain we're getting. Which everybody knows, if you don't know, when these warm rains start and you get 60, 64 degree rains and the lake's been 45 and 40 degrees, them fish will head right up in those creek heads. They'll get up there in that muddy water and just be in chocolate milk. You'll be like, I can't believe there's fish in here. But crappie, bass, catfish, and all will start that migration. Those crappie I've been catching, they're already, you know, they're full of eggs. They're just, they're already orange looking, the ones I cleaned yesterday. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just a matter of time. I just wish we wouldn't get this big <laughs> flood, you know? Yeah. You know, you got to have ice for a few days here in Tennessee, yeah, and then that's right. some sunshine sun weather. Days, and then some flooding. Yeah, you that's know, right. You know, we might be under ice again next week. Who knows? Well, that's right. right. Or 90 degrees. That's right. Days. Yeah, I think sometimes our fish don't know what to do. You know, in, well, in the spring. I'm sure they stung right now. <laughs> what that happened the last three weeks. So you yeah, know. yeah. Well, of course, we'll be at Fake Sanders Saturday. Yeah. Until just a few days ago, it looked like a frozen <laughs> pond. Well, well that's what I was somewhere. fixing to say over there, Beaverage Creek, where I've been catching them crappie and stuff yesterday the whole cove was just shad and stuff working and you could see one or two hybrid in there busting them yeah. but today you got that north wind that come back in it's a little cooler there wasn't as much action and plus the wind will blow that bait on the other side of the lake and you won't think it's there it's just moved on you yeah of course they've moved and they go just, right just with a little bit just a little know? bit but you you did hit on the fact earlier and, and you and i talked about it on the way down here tonight you have been catching fish though in 
three feet and less of water. That's right, already. Uh, and just in the last few days. Yes. Crazy. So, you know, guys, it, I, you know, I kind of thought they would be a little bit deeper out myself. And then we were up at Cordell Hole yesterday. I found out they were a little shallower than I That's thought right. they were, too. That's right. Uh, even up there at Cordell Hole. But, uh, you know, catching them that shallow <coughs> already, guys, it's, it's, and a lot it's of those, turning on. A lot of those are speckled crappie. They're not a black or a white crappie. They're like what you catch out of Florida specs. So all of them are big. You yeah. know what I mean? You hardly catch one you got that won't measure. Yeah. I mean, and they're eating. Yeah. They're eating it. I mean, they you, they're thumping it. They, they're, they're turning on good. And the, the bass, I've heard just in the last few, you know, a little bit. I mean, Tristan, what are you seeing, you know, just right now the last few days and, and as far as the bass go? Well, I mean, we got a bunch of big tournaments going on right now. You know, you got the Red Crest, you know, the guys down at Knoxville Bassmasters. And they're catching them, even them, you know, the pros, they're catching them a lot shallower than they expected. You know, they all started offshore, you know, caught a few fish, whatnot, then they worked their way up, and they're like, oh, well, they're, you know, they're a lot shallower than everyone's thinking. So, you know, the warming trend, the water's going to warm up. You know, these fish are going, they're wanting to go. They're just waiting on it. And uh, it won't be long till it lights out. Yep. And you think this rain event too? I mean, it ought to bring it up. Oh, absolutely. Think a few degrees. I mean, anyway. we was talking about parking lot. That warm rain. I mean, it, it could warm the water up five, six, seven degrees. Oh, so yeah. just a second. Yeah, yeah. Just and in the fish day. world, I mean, that's that's just five yeah, degrees. Huge. Yeah. They'll move up in the inches. Yeah. yeah. They'll be ready. Well, yeah. I know I've been receiving a lot of calls this week about what they think the fish conditions are and all that so I think if this show goes on it should help people uh -huh. be at ease on yep. what they should be doing come Saturday. Absolutely. I received a call on Saturday from a guy up in Indiana and he wanted to come down and fish the tournament and I told him come on. He said well we got ice out up here. I didn't want to tell him we had ice out down here too. <laughs> yeah. so, you know. You'll feel right at home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sit right in. Yeah. Well yeah, that's exactly what we want to do tonight and, and uh, as we get in into the show a little deeper we've actually got some baits here yep. on the table we've got some rod setups and we're we're gonna get you know really into exactly some of these baits that you guys you know prefer in the winter time uh, and how you fish them because a lot of times you might both be throwing the same thing but you Don't know work sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. 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 That's right. this time of year I mean I would <coughs> say just from my experience in general regardless of what you're doing right now you need to be a little bit slower with it absolutely correct. Um, you know it, what, regardless what you're throwing right you know just slow it down a little bit um, try to keep it keep it in the zone a little bit longer than than what you would in the summertime where right. it'll be a lot more aggressive or later on in the spring um, but yeah I'm looking forward to getting into some of these baits now this time of year as well you know Saturday you're going into a, a situation where it's going to be raining Friday. You got rain coming Saturday. So what we're going to get into next when we when we get back is I want to talk about kind of how you you think about setting up. You, you know, got rising and water ready yeah. to go. And yeah, rising and water ready to go. But right now, guys, we're going to go on over and do this week's wild game forecast. It's being sponsored by our friends at Wilson Bank and Trust. You guys can go see them at one of 28 Middle Tennessee locations. They've been serving our community for over 30 years. Be sure to stop in and tell them thank you for everything that they do for us here at the show. All right, now uh, we just kind of opened into the forecast, and so that worked out perfect. But again, got a little rain coming. We think the water temperature is going to come up some. Chocolate milk possible mm -hmm. you know you know sure. by, by saturday evening or especially if somebody you guys are going to be fishing a tournament on sunday it's probably going to be pretty messy by then um do you see any any difference guys in just the next few days do you think will that happen do you think those more fish will come in shallow now well 24 hours will make a lot of difference yeah. yeah you know and it depends how much rain we get and how warm the rain is and if the water the rain is pretty warm i think Fishing should be really good, probably mid morning to midday, and then it'll just get better as the day go on. But yeah. for the anglers, it might not get better. You know? <laughs> yeah. Might be a little bit soggy, yeah. but we got some rain suits, and and uh, we're I think we're good to go on that. As long as we don't. So get here's too something flat. else: the warm rain does. You've got crawdads that's been up all winter now. They've been froze up. They've been put up. Over today, I turned over three or four rocks. There's already ten crawdads mm -hmm. already out. Yeah, yeah. Now that's another reason fish go shallow. Yeah. That warm rain gets them rocks running in them holes. And them crawdads start coming out, man. When them crawdads start coming out, them fish start going up. Yeah. yeah. And they know when it's happening. And yeah, you know, I mean, shad automatically go and bluegill. I mean, everything's going. Yeah. I mean, my biggest thing is like, you know, I like to 
you can't get stuck on one place because these fish move. I mean, you can't get stuck down one stretch of bank. You got to move around. Don't you know? Be versatile because these fish are moving every minute. Mm -hmm. I mean, so don't get stuck on one place. You know, always move around this time of year because you know, right around the corner, you can run a new fish. You know, and then look and, the boat. Yeah. yeah, and it's a good time to go yeah. back to fish. Yeah. Absolutely. So like if you catch some at nine o'clock or ten o'clock, and you want to go back. This is the time of year yeah. to go back and get another run yeah. of them. Yeah. And they might be a hundred yards down the bank or yeah. you know, further mm -hmm. back in or however. So yeah. they're somewhere close. Yeah. They they once good you catch that first fish, it should give you an indication of what you need to be doing. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. And I if agree. you catch them on the first Try to cast, put a pattern together. And I mean, if you catch the them on the first <laughs> cast, put the boat back on the trailer <laughs> and go home. And go home. And go home. Ain't gonna get another bite. <laughs> Especially if it's raining. Yeah. You don't, yeah. you don't yeah. mess with that. You forget it. Well, guys, we want to remind you to follow us on Facebook. Keep up with us there. We've constantly got updates for you and and doing different contests and things there on Facebook that you can't catch here on the show. So follow us there. Also check us out at SWWTV.com. You can find links to all of our great sponsors and all of our past shows there. We'll be back here in just a minute with this week's Pictures of the Week and some more Southern Woods and Waters. TVA's Acura Series, Agara Barrels for guaranteed accuracy, Nitride for guaranteed rust proofing, and a rifle guaranteed to be the best muzzle loader you've ever shot. CBA, it's just a better gun. This segment's being brought to you by 3rd Regiment Game Calls, friends, family, and faith in the outdoors, one call at a time. All right, everybody, it's time for this week's Pictures of the Week. This week's picture of the week is being sponsored by Flowers Deer Processing and Garden Center. You guys can find them at 4550 Eaton's Creek Lane in Nashville, Tennessee, or you can stop by there and let them take care of all your gardening and flower needs here soon, guys. They're getting those greenhouses up and ready. Be sure when you stop in, you tell them thank you for everything they do for us here at the show. All right, our first picture here, you know this fella here, Dayton. This is our buddy Nathan Ball. And Nathan lives up in East Tennessee in the Morristown area. And he does a lot of fishing up there. And he had a good day crappie yes, fishing so yesterday. Fish, yeah, they, so they gave did. Him a whole net. <laughs> gave him a net. Dayton said, get the net. And Nathan, Nathan took him for real That's there right. on that one. That's right. Congratulations on those, oh, buddy. buddy. That's my buddy. Eating. All right, our next picture here. This is one of our Bass Nation anglers here, and this is Logan Evans, and he had a great day just a few days ago mm, on his nice. home lake, which is Chickamauga. Oh, so I wonder. Great, great day great on, and a really nice fish there, Logan. Monsters. All right, here's a couple more nice fish. This is Jimmy Jordan, and Jimmy caught these two bass this past week in Alabama on two casts back to back. He was on it. On <laughs> He found the spot, I guess. Yeah. But uh, congratulations on that. The very, very nice fish, Jimmy. I'm sure you was you you can just go on to the house after yeah, that. Sure. Yeah. If we do that up. Saturday morning, we'll just check <laughs> in and get us a cheeseburger. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll right. <laughs> All right, guys, and here on the end, this is White Whitaker. And this is his biggest buck to date, and that is a, a really monster. nice deer. Yeah. This is a nice 11 point that White got this past year on a juvenile hunt. That's so a great deer. congratulations on that one, White. Really, really nice buck. You guys can send your pictures to us here at Southern Woods and Waters, 474 James Robertson Parkway, or get them to me on Facebook or at the email there on the screen, and we will get them on the show just as soon as we can. All right, welcome back to the studio. 
We are in here tonight talking about cold weather, wintertime bass fishing, mm -hmm. and uh, we've kind of we've talked a little bit about the the water temperatures that's coming. I do one more thing before we leave water temperature. We keep talking about temperature, but we have not talked about any numbers. So when we talk about water temperature, and let's say for example the uh, spawn, you know, as it's coming up, what are the numbers we're looking for water temperature wise? Well, I'll say this first. Uh, it just depends on what lake you're on. Yeah. River systems are different than a regular impoundment, so there's a little difference there. So, bigger fish will spawn quicker. Yeah, I mean the the biggest fish everyone knows goes up first. But yeah. like Dayton said, you know, the river fish we got a lot more current, water's flowing. You know, these man-made lakes that the water sets, it's gonna warm up quicker. But I mean, I just left Gunnersville and we was in like the 44s or 45 degree water, cold. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, everyone's wanting to go down there and catch them on a trap. But I mean, I say the magic number for a trap for the fish to move up to their pre-spawn stages is about 51, 52, 53, yeah. somewhere in there. So I mean, okay. that's you know, that's my pre-spawn stuff. But I mean, every lake's different. So, so. you know, low to mid 50s yeah. is kind of where you're Pretty looking much. at yeah. a change. Absolutely. You know, yeah, but it has to stay that temperature for several days before mm -hmm. you get yeah. the full effect. For sure. If it can't be 51 and a cold front come through and it drops down to 47. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that it depends on the northern bass. We usually don't have a problem with that, but yeah. it's, this, it's those Florida spring bass that really have a problem with that, and they'll have locked y'all in a minute, you know. <laughs> yeah, so that so a, a five or six days of that, and then you can kind of expect them to have yeah. made that transition. Like this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 For sure. This exactly. week, that's exactly right. That's why I don't want to wanted to hit on that, actually, because we are right here, kind of on one of those big transition points um, where we're going to see a big difference coming up, you know, so you might be doing something Something different next week than what you were doing this past mm -hmm. week you know it, it like you said Tristan that law would be a totally different area doing yeah. a totally different thing you know a few days later um, but let's let's talk about a few baits here for just a few minutes I know we got some we're gonna go over here in a little bit but uh, grab one of your your I know you got several things in there that you yeah. brought specifically uh, I just want to cover a few of those and and what conditions do you prefer them in you know and and what depths you you know things like that well well, I mean, wintertime fish, you know, everyone knows Alabama rig, and uh, I mean, that's a huge, huge, huge bait in the wintertime. Catch suspended fish, go down the bank, whatever you want to do. But like for me, you know, the technology in the fishing world has blown through the roof. We got forward facing sonars, we got three, six, they can't hide. Yep. So a big thing I like to do in the wintertime is find them suspended. Whether it's in, you know, 100 foot of water, they could be sitting in 20 foot, however. But I like to catch them looking at them on this bait, and you know, that's a really, really good tool. They can't I stand the same when it reels by their face for yeah. sure. So, I mean, you can do the same thing with jerk baits. You can put on a single swim bait, but I mean, that's you know that's probably my favorite winter time. And um, you know, like we said again, when the water gets up and gets warm, the water gets muddy. Everyone knows about the red chatterbait. You can't. These things right here is like gold. Yeah. And uh, you know, this is a big tool too. And I'm a big chatterbait guy. It's my go-to bait. Though at winter time, summertime, if I need to get a bite, I put this in my hand. So, I mean, that's some of my favorites. I mean, you can flip a jig. You know, you can do a bunch of stuff. Can you jerk bait? Yeah. I mean, you can jerk bait them. Suspended fish. I mean, it's great, great tools you can have there. So. So these are all things that you would you would use right now. You know? yeah, yeah, I mean, keep it. I mean, well, depending on the water temp, you know, that's that's a huge huge yeah. role yeah. in it. But I mean, a couple of weeks ago, I'd be nothing but a rig and a jerk bait. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. just plain and simple. I mean, heck, Daniel was catching the uh, he was catching the fire at a hybrid on an a rig. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It's it's yeah. This thing will I catch mean, any any fish in the lake. They were thumping <laughs> it. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. amazing how real they look. You know, if you've seen the videos of mm -hmm. them, you know, underwater. I mean, it looks like a school of oh yeah of shad it mm -hmm. it's, it's as real as and this is a little one they make picasso makes one that's has like 17 lures on it right. yeah i mean it's huge so i mean they do look they imitate a school of shad so i mean it's it's awesome bait for sure yeah well glad you hit on size a little bit because i wanted to get into that so with crappie you know i, I do a lot more crappie fishing than i do bass fishing but i know a crappie the weight of that let's say that you know in that case the, the head on that chatterbait yeah, that makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with a crappie, you can be throwing a one sixteenth and a three sixteenths and catching a fire out of fish on one and can't get a bite on the other. Yeah. So, my point being, is there anything you need to change right now about the, are you throwing a smaller, lighter uh, jig, you know, right now on average than you would be in warmer weather, or are you throwing, you know, well, a heavier I mean, one? Well, it depends a lot, because, I mean, 
like on our sonars and our forward facing sonars you can look at them and see where they're sitting in the water column mm -hmm. and you can watch your bait you know if you throw it out there and you let it sink down and you start reeling it and it rises up in the water column you're like well we need to put some heavier weights on you know quarter ounce half ounce whatever it could be in the case but i mean for me that's a huge advantage instead of just like guessing and saying well i'm not getting a bite i need to change something yeah. up i can actually look at them and be like well my bait's going over top of them i'm not letting yeah. it get to them or whatever but water column i mean that is the biggest thing in fishing in my opinion and keeping your bait in that Pacific water column that them fish are sitting in makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. For electronics, sure. I mean, there's nobody up here that can't agree that <laughs> electronics in fishing. I mean, PV, how far have they come since you started fishing? Look, I'm still getting used to the <laughs> Lorenz number five, you yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, it's really gone past what yeah. I'm used to, you know. Man, it has I remember changed. those little flashers, you yes, know. Sir. So, that what they're doing, you know, they can look at the uh, Look at the screen, and they know exactly what the yeah. fish want to do. They know how big the fish right. is, you, you know. know. And, 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 and that's something I want to hit on too. Um, I was sitting around dinner the other night with a bunch of buddies, and we got to talking. One of our older guys said, "Would you enjoy bass fishing as much as you do now if you didn't have the electronics?" I didn't know how to answer that. Yeah, I, right. wouldn't, know, I wouldn't know what to do. Yeah, well, well, I can tell you my answer. Well, yeah. you, you know, <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying. You well, yeah, yeah, I put on tournaments all the time, and Christian, he's fished one of my tournaments yeah. out on Kentucky Lake before, and I try to tweak them to make them just a little different. You yeah. know, I would like someone one day to put up a big tournament. Up. And you couldn't use electronics. Hey, I've I've said the same you know, we've had to, yeah. Yeah. And you we've just had, had to the use your discussion. skills. I think it'd be fun yeah, too. Yeah. Real fun. You, can, you know, the, the major league fishing guys, they have an 18 foot boat, yeah. okay? They don't have those big 20 ones. Yeah. Yeah. Well, take yeah. the electronics off of them yeah. and see what they do. You <laughs> That's know? Right. I think it'd be great. So maybe we ought to look into that in the future. <laughs> For sure. Thing. Well, guys, we're going to go over and do this week's product of the week. This week's product of the week is being brought to you by Caney Fork Outdoors. You guys can find them at cfoutdoors.com or get off of I-40 there at the Center Hill Dam exit. Go down to the bottom of the hill and take a right, and you'll find them at the Big Rock Market. Let them get you outfitted and down there on the Caney Fork River so you can get, do your own catching some trout and some walleye well, and some sauger and everybody in there. <laughs> but the Caney Fork, I used to think, oh, it's a trout. But it is, but buddy, there's a lot more than trout. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got over there, Tristan? So this um, is Lure Lock. I got with this company this year. This is um, an unbelievable company. These guys are awesome, and they design, you know, tackle boxes. And this right here is a medium box. Um, you know, good size. I make a small, medium, large. I make ultra thins. But the cool part about it is, um, you see that blue right there? That's Tack Logic. So when you put your baits in here, you know, they ain't going to fall out. They keep everything nice and neat. Don't break. Run it down the lake. You know, it's an awesome, awesome company. And um, I'm tickled to death to be with them. So, yeah. And uh, some Bass Reaper stuff. I might, we're actually going to get this stuff away, too. So um, I got some Coffin Cross, some Sinister Shads. You know, these are great tools you can use baits this time of year. Winter, spring, summer, you can do it all with these baits. And... Uh, that's a great company also. Okay, and then you can get those, I know, at BassReaper.com. Yeah, That's you, where you get them. Yeah, you can get and, them on uh, Facebook too. You can get them on Facebook, internet, however you can get them. So. Okay, and what about LureLock? LureLock.com. Um, you can get them on, look at them on social media, Facebook, everything will be linked on there too. Perfect. So it's right. easy to find, super easy. So. Yeah, Definitely. well, we appreciate it very much. A couple of great products. Guys, we're going to get ready to take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to open the phone lines for you, and we'll have some more Southern Woods and Waters. This segment is being sponsored by the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Join us in preserving and protecting Tennessee's wildlife. All right, guys, this next segment is being brought to you by our friends over at Taylor's Archery. You guys can find them at 100 East Lauderdale Street in Tullahoma, Tennessee. Or give owner Tracy Taylor a call at 931-563-7706 and let him take care of all your archery needs. They've got a beautiful indoor range there, full stock supplies, and those guys can set your bow up any way you need it and get you ready to go. All right, welcome back to the studio. You guys can call us now, 615-737-7767. Uh, any questions or comments you ha may have for, for any of these guys up here, give us a call and, and uh, pick their brain a little bit. We've actually already got a caller here, so we're going to jump on to that. And we have got... Lark, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I was wondering, uh, back in the fall, are you there? Yes. Okay. Back in the fall, you had some guys from Kentucky 
that uh, had some kind of a, a fog for a cover scent for deer? Uh, and yeah. I was wondering about some way to get a hold of them. Uh, sure, that, that would have been feedy greedy. And, and they are out of Kentucky. I, I believe Scottsville, if I'm saying that right. Either way, they're in Kentucky, and it is called Feedy Greedy. And you can find them on Facebook. I believe they also have a website. If you were to Google it, it should pull that up. Um, but uh, real good guys. Jonathan Sidner is our contact there. Uh, you may find, you know, you would probably talk to him when you contact them. But, but feedy greedy are those products. They make the fog and they also have uh, some minerals and, and several other products as well. That's cool. Okay, thank you. I was, uh, I just turned it on and, and got in on the end of it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, reach out to them. And uh, if you will, just let them know you saw it on here. Okay, thank you so we, much. I'm sure appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate you calling. Have a great night. You too. Yeah, that's that's reaching on back there. Sure. Now, but, uh, <laughs> but that but that was they, they were great products and we right. used them we used them probably three quarters of last season. Right. And awesome. uh, that fog he's talking about is pretty cool. Um, getting back to this weekend, uh, we're going to go ahead and tell y'all now too. Here in a little bit, we're going to be doing a little giveaway. I say a little giveaway, kind of turned giveaway. into a big giveaway. <laughs> yeah. So let's get. So I just want y'all to know to be ready to call for that later, not right now. Call now for any of your comments or questions. Uh, but PB, we're going to be doing an entry to the Frostbite Tournament tonight. Yes. And Tristan has got three packs of these Bass Reaper baits and a lure lock box. Yep. And all that is going to be given away here in just a little while at the end of segment four. So right now, keep your phones ready. Call us with your comments. But I just wanted y'all to know that so you'll be ready to call for that later. Uh, looking forward to that. Dayton, you like to throw swim baits. Let's talk about swim baits for just, just a minute. a good buddy of mine, Austin Meeks, makes these. are game day lures. These are some great product. It's right here made locally, packaged good, a real fine quality product. He makes crawl swim baits. Y'all give him a, a good shout out and look him up at game day lures. Now, how are you used to fishing this thing? Tell me about your... Well, it's going to be the size head and hook mostly. You're going to go half ounce, mostly on 20. If you're going to fish shallower, you can get away with a three-eighths or quarter, yep. but three-quarters isn't bad, yep. you know, just depends on can, where they're at. Can I tell on you for a minute? No. <laughs> I, was, I was hoping we might get into something else you do with them swim baits. Sauger fish? No, but I know a guy, his initials are Dayton Blair, that'll take a swim bait and put them on a buzz bait. That's right. Yep. And fish that swim bait under under a buzz take, bait, take the skirt off of take it. The, there's a couple of different and, uh, ways that I do that. You've a lot of fish that way well, in, in the You know, they finally started making them about four years. You know, they started making frogs and rivets mm -hmm. yeah. and already made buzz baits. Well, I always throw hoppies. Hoppies yeah. is my favorite lure as far as a buzz bait goes. Yeah. And man, you just take the skirts off and put whatever color swim bait you like. Yeah. It casts further, less wind drag, and use super glue. You want to super glue these on because when you go to throwing it, they'll slide down. I prefer super glue on everything, even yeah. my crappie tubes or my crappie yep. heads. Because sure. I can take and go through a whole pack of crappie tubes or like the little magnets in an hour and a half if you glue it on you don't never lose you use it. it all evening you use yeah. it all evening we got some more callers here we... nikki how are you doing they're just fine we appreciate you calling that can we help you tonight i just want to pick somebody's brain about crappie fish and i eat crappie fish all the time and i've been fishing chicken mark with some and we've been catching them about five or six foot deep Okay. Uh, well, it, that is, we do a lot of crappie fishing, but Dayton has actually been crappie fishing the last couple of days. I've been, so. I've been the last two days, and day before yesterday, I caught them in a foot of water. They were actually not even 18 inches deep. And then I caught them today probably three and a half feet deep, and I'll show you while I got you on the phone. A lot of people don't know this, but they make a Mr. Crappie rattling float. I'm going to give you a little example. This here is probably two and a half foot, maybe three. You can adjust the float to whatever depth, but yesterday I was literally catching them that deep. The lake was froze seven days ago, and the fish are yeah. literally plumb right up on the bank. They're in a foot of water, but I would go into the back of the creeks. I'm not telling you that the river channels and the main lake still ain't full of crappie because they are, but the easier and more aggressive ones are fixed to go up in these creeks after this rain. 
That's exactly where I caught those, was in muddy water. I didn't catch any of those crappie in clear water. It was muddy. Well, no, we, I've been catching them Chickamauga. We get great falls the other day. And we picked it by Sam Mayer and never got a nibble out of the hole. Yeah, you know, they may have moved on up down there. They may be working their way up a little bit. Yeah. Because, like, today I was fishing around some people and they were throwing, you know, trying to throw 30 yards out and only fishing yeah. way out there. Well, the whole time, they're not really watching me, and I'm literally casting down beside the bank. I'm not necessarily throwing out in the deep. I want to maintain yeah. that three and five feet of water as long as I can. I don't want to come from the 12 to eight to six to three if I can throw and drag six foot all the time. These I catch off the bank. This is not a boat that I'm catching these off the bank early in the morning to late in the evenings. But they okay. are in the creek, strictly in a creek. Well, that's what we caught them in, then Chickamauga was in the creek. Yep. But I haven't been able to get on the rest of the boat. Well, that'll probably be what's going on after these last few warm days. Everything's fixing to really turn on. All right, I thank you very much. And I'll yeah. thank Brandon for putting on a good show. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you thank so much you for so calling. Much. Have a good right. night. Thank you very much. All right, do we have on three? Sorry, that took a second there, guys. Kurt, how are you doing? Can you hit? Let's try that again. Kurt, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Doing good. We appreciate you calling. How can we help you tonight? Yes, sir. I just uh, wanted to talk about the uh, Smoke Creek Rod that's sitting there by Tristan. Uh huh. Yep. And uh, see what uh, what your favorite rod he is. He is. He got on the uh, Smoke Creek Rod. All right. Well, the Smoke Creek, you know, is um, an absolute awesome rod. I absolutely love these rods. My favorite rod, um, just, you know, good all-around, good length rod is a 7.3 medium heavy. Um, you can do anything from throw chatterbait, trap, jig. I mean, you can do it all. That's the best all-purpose round rod, in my opinion. And uh, I have a lot of 7.3 heavies and medium yeah. heavies. And so. now, what is this one sitting right here tonight with you? That's a, actually, a, I think it's a 7-foot medium. Okay. And, and, what, uh, and uh, there's something significant about this one. Uh, while we got you on the phone here, this coming week, next Thursday night, you have a chance to call and win this Smoke Creek Rod. Yep. So yes, just sir. keep just keep that in mind. Uh, it, I'm it, on the pro staff. Well, I'm on the pro staff for Smoke oh, Creek Rod. Oh, so. you you're not allowed. You're <laughs> not eligible. <laughs> <laughs> not not eligible. Mm -hmm. So, well, Dayton can't win it either. Dayton don't need to win it either. Well, he he, sure we just, always make sure he just don't go take a bathroom break yeah. before the call in or something. That's what I was trying to. Them. Well, what I usually do is just break the tip off a little bit and put another eye, and they don't really want it. Then. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. Well, hey, we appreciate you calling. Yes, sir. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye. So. Seven foot three. That's yep. kind of if you couldn't have anything else. I mean, it's a good versatile rod. You can do anything with it. You yep. know, and I tell people that a lot because there, there's so many different lengths of rods. You got six, six, sevens. You know, seven, eleven. So, I mean, a seven three is just a good all around purpose rod. Yeah, and you know, it takes a lot of people to make tournaments like PB have and like my winter series, you've got to have sponsors. Yep. And you've got to have people you can depend on, like John Cosett, Jayco Marine, and yep. the White Blue at American Jewelry, uh, Chris R. Not yep. Insurance Agency. Yeah, USS. You're in, I mean, you know, without them, I mean, I mean that's just like that's what it, the that's show. what it no. takes. I mean, yep. you have got to have that, and they depend on us also. No. A lot of people don't realize that, how big a sponsor really is. I mean, it's one yeah. of the major deals, yeah. and when you get that, you don't want to lose it. You want to do yeah. what you can to maintain yeah. and take them people, and y'all go visit them. Once you see our sponsors on the show, call yeah. them. Yeah. Go look at their products and see what they got, and look at PB sponsors and yeah. tell them thank you, yeah. just like our sponsors. They, you know. gave, they give their time, their money, you know, to, it's to not, it's not to just to us, but to our sport, to right. what we right. love, right. and to the betterment of that. And I mean, they're know. taking money out of their businesses yeah. and their own pockets to give us yeah. to yep. do this. Yeah. You couldn't do it on for That's sure. Right. No. That's right. And everybody misses out on how important that is when you do pick up a sponsor, man. Right. Don't just kick them to the wayside. Yeah. Like, you know, try to take care of them. And That's I right. want to double up on what he said. 
2020 was a rough year for people losing their jobs, companies losing money. It was. And for them to step up the way they have for us this year, we really appreciate it. So we yeah. thank you all. Now, yeah. I know I'm not a NASCAR person. I can name off all <laughs> of them for you. But uh, everyone who sponsored us this year, we really appreciate it. Sound like it. an auctioneer. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we're going to get ready to go on over and do this week's tip of the week. It's being sponsored by a friend at Phoenix Custom Quality Rods. Y'all can find them at phoenixrods.com or here in the state of Tennessee. Call Mr. Jim Brewer at 931-213-1455 and let Jim take care of all your Phoenix rod needs. All right, now going back down to PV, you got a tip for us tonight. Oh gosh, I got, I got <laughs> one. Um, my tip of the week is going to be a tip for the season. Uh, it's called being courtesy to anglers and hunters you know a lot of the hunters they you know probably don't know what i'm talking about but <laughs> you know but the anglers out there you know fishing get ready to start and everybody think they got a spot on the lake and if you pull up too close to them they want to fight you um, so just give them a little courtesy you know yes. usually most guys that say can i come in on you and then you if you don't want to if you say no i guess no. most of the time they'll move on yeah but you know i've run into a lot of problems with that and yeah. usually i just move on you know yeah and i ran into a particular problem back in the fall of last year we was fishing a tournament on uh, on uh, Pickwick and it was the Toyota team's uh, owners tournament yeah and we pulled up to Kroger Allen and I if anybody's familiar with Pickwick y'all know where Kroger mm -hmm. Allen's at well there was a couple of guys that was uh, on the bank and they was they was hunters and they had their little geese you know, all yeah, the fishing geese yeah. out in the water. You know, I'm not a hunter fan. Yeah. But I, we pulled up on the spot because the day before we had found some fish there. So I thought, well, that's where we'll start. Well, I heard some geese come flying over and I looked up. They was really up high, you know. They didn't have no chance to land, you know. And they just went on by. So a few seconds later, a gunshot went over. Boom. A few seconds later, we just heard splashes of buckshots around the boat. Wow. So we thought, well, maybe they were shooting, you know, just for the heck of it, just because yeah. they was bored. A few minutes later, another shot got over. Boom! And the, sh and the buckshots were getting closer to the boat. Yeah. I said, man, I think they shooting at us, you know. <laughs> no. hey. And surely they that, were. They were shooting right. at us, so we just moved on yeah, now. Just, you know. just show some courtesy. There's plenty of, there's water out there for everybody. Yep. It ain't just for yep. you. Uh, and just to add a little bit to what you said, Make that courtesy bleed into the into the boat ramp uh, boat ramp area. Uh, let's watch our courtesy there and our boat ramp etiquette. Uh, you know, guys, there, sometimes there's a lot of people got to get in and out of the water. Yeah. That's just part of it. You got to be patient, do your thing. That's right. Uh, that's a good place to meet friends or make enemies. That's you know, right. Every, everybody's boating so. skill yeah. said ain't the same. You know? That's right. That's right. Well, guys, we're going to get ready to take another quick break, and we'll be back here in just a minute with some more Southern Woods and Waters. CVA's Acura Series, Vergara Barrels for guaranteed accuracy, Nitride for guaranteed rust proofing, and a rifle guaranteed to be the best muzzle loader you've ever shot. CVA, it's just a better gun. This segment's being sponsored by Tri-Green Equipment. Stop in and see them at 21 locations in Alabama, Mississippi, and Tennessee. They can take care of all your Honda, Steel, and John Deere needs. All right, everybody, this next segment is being sponsored by Courtney's Restaurant and Catering. You guys can find them at 4066B North Mount Juliet Road in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Or you can give owner Tom Courtney a call, 615-754-7548, and let them take care of all your delivery or catering needs. All right, welcome back to the studio. Um, you know, guys, we've been talking different things as far as, uh, you know, what we like to do, some baits that y'all use in the wintertime, some water temperatures. Um, now one of my favorite questions that, that I want to get to. Uh, also, I want to let you viewers know, if you want to call, you can still call 615-737-7767. Uh, we'll leave that open a few more minutes till we get ready for our giveaway. Um, but, so we'll start with you, Tristan. We got some guys coming in to fish this. We were just talking with PB about this. Some from out of state, you know, other areas that have never fished this lake. So I'm not talking about Percy Priest in particular, but let's say you go to a new lake, all right? You don't have pre-fishing days. You're showing up. There's 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 rain coming. We got our temperatures we got right now. Where, where do you start? 
Where well, do you go to? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question because that's, I mean, that is a huge topic for a lot of people. A lot of people don't get to go down and spend a week practice. Right. Um, for me, you know, before I get down there, I always get on my GPS, look at the map, um, study the lake level. If there's current, look at the current, see what the water level is, and, you know, fish live on riprap 100%. Yeah. So if there's a bridge, start on riprap. You know, whether it's a jerk bait, throwing a jig, and whenever you get a bite on it, say you get a bite, you know, flipping a jig around on some rock, well, that can kind of, you know, some stuff starts clicking in your head. Well, maybe I can go drag on a point where rock is and get bit. So, you know, and the biggest thing is do what you're comfortable. Um, and dock talk's a huge thing. Don't yeah. let people say we're catching them, you know, in 20 foot of water. Do, go do what you're comfortable with. And uh, for me, I've, I've been bad with, you know, chasing what people's telling me, and it never works. Yeah, right. So, I mean, you got to go right. do what your strong suits are. So, for you sure. know, you got your maps, GPS, and thing. Now, PB, we were talking a while ago. You know, hey, when you when you when you don't have, you're not looking for maps. You, you know, you may have your regular fish finders, things like that. Um, but where would you start? I mean, what I would you add to that? I go to a point. There's a rocky point, and I'll start either on if it has current on it or not. I'll start there. Yeah. And then I'll after I leave there, I'll do like Tristan say, I'll go find some riffraff somewhere. Yeah. And then you know. Then I'll just slowly start eliminating water until hopefully I'll find what I'm looking for. Trying to get something together, yeah. something figured out as far as where they're holding. Now, do you have it? Is there a particular go to bait there, for, you know, for either one of you guys? I mean, I, I know you kind of said where you start, but, you know, what do you start with? You're going to start throwing a jig? You're going to start with a uh, buzz bait? What are you going to start with? Well, I'll say with me, I, I've experimented over a few years and I've I, I fished with jigs before, but I fish with a fluke and I drag the fluke on the bottom real mm -hmm. slow. Yeah. And any small mouth that's around that area can't, they <laughs> can't deal with it. <laughs> they're going to eat they're it gonna up, pick man. it up and they're going to hit it and you just set the hook and go on by your business, yeah. you know. So that's what I know me do, right. you know. And when that don't work, then, you know, I'll go to a jerk bait or something like that. But I'll, but I'll start real slow and then I'll pick up my pace as the morning or the afternoon goes on. Yeah. Yeah. And you just heard what he said, you know, that's PB's, that's his strong suit, dragging up fluke. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I highly suggest, you know, do what you're comfortable with. That's right. Because, I mean, don't, just, that's the biggest thing, just do what you're comfortable with. Yeah, that's right. Now, it, and Dayton, you know, you and I fished together a long time. I, I would probably be right in saying for you, that's going to be a crankbait. Right, well, yeah, but. <clears throat> if you just had to go to something, I mean, <clears throat> I've, I I've to seen to you it. use it a lot. Right. To well, locate fish. Here's how I used to do it, and I still do it today is a paper map. Yep. If you're at your motel room and you don't want to go out there and get in a boat, you break that map open and start looking at your creek drops, where they're at, where you're going to be, what's going on over here, is there a steam plant on this lake, is there an, uh, a cold water outlet, is there a sewer plant, you just got all kinds of options that you have to physically, if you can look at the night before, that you need to do, but a, a paper map's the best. And that's a, something a lot of people's forgot about. That's a, just, yes. I mean, yeah. but when I would go to, when I would, when I would go to just any lake from gun, even though I know gunners, well, you still don't know it like you think. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you get to look you at them maps. On that map you look on them maps, and man, it's just, it's there. Neely Henry, Logan Martin, Gunnersville, Pickwick, Nickajack, Chickamauga. Yeah. You've got to physically look at the map before you get into the boat and go. Right. Yep. Then it's time to fish. Then, then it's time it's not time to look at the map. Because you know where you're going. Yeah. I mean, you've done done all the That's hard right. work. It's just the night before. Yeah. Just break out an old paper map. Well, guys, we are ready for y'all to get ready to call in. The fifth caller is going to get an entry into this year's Frostbite Tournament from PB White. And we are also going to have two packs. Is that, am I right? Three packs of Bass Reaper baits and also one of these Lure Locks boxes. So, fifth caller... 615-737-7767. Give us a call and you'll be fishing with us Saturday. We'll be back here in just a minute with some more Southern Woods and Waters.
This is sponsored by Drake's Creek Outdoors, a unique, affordable way to display your trophies. Still got it. All right, everybody, this week's calendar of events is being sponsored by Burdine Supply. They're located over in Mount Juliet, Tennessee at 6966 Lebanon Road. That's about a quarter mile west of Highway 109. Or you can give owner Vincent Lending a call at 615-453-9222 and let them take care of all your residential and commercial plumbing and electrical needs. And if anybody's out there that can help teach him how to hunt deer, I need y'all to go to my bird eyes and help Vince. He, he needs some tips he down needs there. Some, he, you're going to have to help him out. Oh, me. Well, guys, we've got a few things tonight we want to announce. So, uh, first of all, we have got a new fishing league going to be started up this year. This is going to be started up by Grace Baptist over in Springfield, Tennessee. And it's going to be called the Anchored by Grace Fishing League. Um, they have a they have an entire schedule put together you guys can check out but I tell you their first one is March the 6th of Percy Priest at a Long Hunter and y'all can call Michael Whitaker if y'all want information uh, y'all can go ahead and call at 615-384-3393 so give them a call it sounds like that'll be a, 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 a deal. great deal they're looking forward to that one uh, March 27th Whitetails Unlimited Banquet that's at the Wilson County Fairgrounds y'all can contact J.R. Murphy or Mark Larice for that. I believe that's at 6 p.m. Don't hold me to that, but uh, get in touch with those guys. They can get your tickets. We will be there for that one. Uh, and then April the 3rd, jumping a little ahead on this one, but we have the Veterans Crappie Tournament. That's on Kentucky Lake. Y'all can contact Shane Barker for that one at 731-514-3325. So several things coming up there. Uh, PB, just one last hit on the uh, Frostbite. Where does everybody go that they want to get registered if they want to go ahead and Get registered. All right, the Saturday morning you'll be going out to our Faith Sanders. The entry fee for in the morning of is eighty dollars. So we encourage you to bring cash if possible. Uh, you could, uh, we could take on online entries, but it's such a bad signal out at Faith Sanders. So we that's why we encourage you to uh, bring cash. It, it is. Also, I want to announce the early entry winner. It was Tanner Morris. So find me Saturday morning, I'll take care of you. All right, one other winner to announce, Ronnie Curry from Goodlettsville is the winner of our giveaway tonight. He'll be down there fishing Saturday with us. Hopefully he might just come down and win it all, who knows, but <laughs> hey, PB, Tristan, thank both of y'all for being here tonight. It's been a pleasure having y'all on here. Dating fun as always. Get the we'll see you guys again this coming week. If you get on that water, wear your life jacket each and every time. We'll see you next week with more Southern Woods and Waters.